Ohola, Bishata Nila, Tis Kulishanim Rabot, Habanim, Behabanot, Beditsa Uvitsohola, Bishata Nila, Michael Sar Yisrael, Eliyahu Vegavriel, Basru Nahag Ula, Bishata Nila. Friends all, it still feels so good to say that, friends all. Gemar Chatimat Tova, the greeting for Yom Kippur, may we all be sealed for good. To those who are here in person at B'nai Israel, and to those who are with us virtually, one united community in the spirit of Yom Kippur, please know how deeply I cherish this opportunity of speaking with you as a prelude to Ni'ilah, the concluding service of this sacred day, and the emotional crescendo of the High Holy Day season. I am especially grateful to my dear colleague, Rabbi Michael Safra, for this invitation and for the friendship that we have shared now for almost two decades. Ni'ilah is a unique moment precisely because there is a heightened urgency to our thoughts. Yom Kippur, with all its drama and intensity, will soon be over, and another year stretches uncharted before us how we ask, how will we be using that gift of time? Like so many others, I was mesmerized by the events of recent weeks as the Taliban seized control of Afghanistan and as over 100,000 Americans and Afghanis were airlifted to safety. In the midst of unrelenting chaos and sorrow, one particular story grabbed my attention. Delta Airlines pilot Alexander Kahn flew hundreds of Afghan refugees from Germany to Dulles as part of a U.S. government partnership with private commercial airlines. It was a poignant experience for Kahn, he told CNN, primarily because his own father was a Holocaust survivor who immigrated to the U.S. in a similar fashion. This is what Alexander Kahn said. My father was liberated from Buchenwald by Patton's Third Army and came to the U.S. not much differently than the people coming now. He had the clothes on his back, no family, no English skills, and had to start life all over again. Luckily, he was able to do so in this land of opportunity, eventually becoming a doctor and serving in the American Army. Khan said that he met his crew the night before the flight from Rammstein Air Force Base to Dulles, and with their own funds, the crew purchased supplies like diapers, wipes, candy, and coloring books for the children because they knew that the evacuees had almost nothing with them. And Khan told the CNN reporter, I was able to put myself in their position and realize that this is going to be a frightening experience for them. But it also has the potential to become an excellent experience. These evacuees are coming to America, and we are a generous country with generous people. What is empathy. It is exactly how Alexander Kahn defined it, putting ourselves in the position of others and then reaching out through tangible acts of caring. 
often we feel overwhelmed, even helpless, by the many problems surrounding us. A highly polarized political culture which threatened democracy itself here in our nation's capital, the devastating effects of climate change, and the scourge of a pandemic now well into its second year, which has upended life for all of us, even for our two-year-old grandson, Benji, who together with all the other kids stood at the entrance to the DC JCC for the first day of his nursery school with a mask tied tightly on his face. But despite the swirl of our world, despite that swirl, wherever we are, whatever our personal circumstances may be, each of us has the capacity for empathy, compassion. Lest you think that empathy or compassion is a 21st century concept, let me assure you that it is at the core of many Jewish values. The Midrash puts it aptly. Just as God is called Rahmana, the compassionate one, so are we mandated to be compassionate, to visit the sick, to comfort the bereaved, to give to those who are in need, and a thousand and more ways to create a better, kinder world for all God's children. Our Bubbies and Zaidi spoke about having Rahmanas for others. That's empathy. That's compassion. Jews were often called Rachmanim, B'nai Rachmanim, compassionate ones who are the children of compassionate ones. Could there be a greater honorific than that? What does our discordant world really need? Surely it is more empathy, more compassion. I was touched by an article in the Post on Monday which described a, a performance on the mall of Come From Away, marking the 20th anniversary commemoration of 9-11. It's the story of the residents of Gander, Newfoundland. When American airspace shut down in the immediate aftermath of 9-11, 38 jets were directed to land in Gander where thousands of these stranded passengers, who came to be known as the Plain People, received an extraordinary outpouring of generosity and hospitality from the locals. That kindness extended for days until the Plain People could return home. At Ni'ila, we pray metaphorically, let the curses of the old year end, let the blessings of the new year begin. How do we create blessings? Each of us can be an agent for blessing as we bring a surge of compassion and empathy to our family, to our community, to our country, and to our Jewish people. It is a responsibility that should be our privilege, even our joy to embrace. Thank you, Yashar Kach, Rabbi Schnitzer, for introducing a final theme to think about as we open the ark, open the gates for the last time. How are we going to be those agents of empathy? Uh, in a moment, we're going to open the ark. The tradition is that the Ark stays open uh, for the entirety uh, of the Ni'ila service, uh, which of course means people rise, but it's also the end of the fast for all of us. And if you do feel faint or not even feel faint, you feel like you need to sit down for any reason, don't think twice about it. It's okay uh, to sit. Uh, page 408. 